Okay, so I went ahead and filled in a few definitions for you, or a couple definitions for you, um, so that we can move a little bit quicker. So concurrent lines. This is where three or more lines intersect at the same point. They occur at the same exact point. The point at which they meet is the point of concurrency. Right. So concurrent lines are three or more three or more lines that meet at the same point. And this right here is called my point of concurrency, where they actually intersect. All right. Now be careful. Just because three lines intersect doesn't necessarily mean that they are concurrent. I could have three lines like this. They're not concurrent. All three need to intersect at the same point. Now, again, point of concurrency is that point where they come together. We're going to learn about specific kinds of points of concurrency, just like we learned about parallelograms and we learned about specific kinds of parallelograms. Point of concurrency is that general term. We're going to learn about specific ones. They have certain types. All right. So then the distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. This distance is also the shortest distance from the point to the line. So we are going to have in a couple of our theorems the word equidistant. And equidistant means equal distance. Equal distance. Oh, you guys are so smart. So um, when we're talking about something is equidistant from the sides, or it's equidistant from the vertices, or the vertices, what we're talking about is the shortest distance between that point and the vertex, or that point and the line. And the shortest distance ends up being that, that perpendicular segment. So, did I talk to you guys yet about walking to the back wall? No. Okay, so pretend that I'm standing here, and I want to get to the back wall. I am our point, back wall is our line, and I want to save my energy, so I want to take the shortest, quickest route there. Passive go this way, is this the quickest, no. shortest route? No, because it's a longer route. If I go this way, is this the quickest, shortest route? No, which way must I go? Straight street. And what am I creating here? 90 degrees, right? It's perpendicular, 90 degree angle. So it's the perpendicular line that is the shortest distance. So for any line. <laughs> Given any line and any point not on that line, the shortest distance from that point to the line is the perpendicular. Okay, so just to keep in mind so that when we're talking about the distances to the sides, I'm talking about the shortest distance, and that shortest distance is always the perpendicular. Right? Okay. So now the meat of what we're learning today. Perpendicular bisector, as you hopefully remember from previous material, is when we have, so the perpendicular bisector of a segment is any line, segment, or ray that cuts that segment in half and is perpendicular to that segment. So for example, here is a segment And a perpendicular bisector is either a line segment, line, or a ray that cuts it in half, which is probably about there, and is perpendicular. Alright, so perpendicular bisector. Now, the circumcenter of a triangle directly relates to the fact that we're dealing with perpendicular bisectors. We are learning a lot of new vocabulary in these next couple of days. And so I'm going to give you a couple of ways to hopefully help you remember the words and know which words to look at. So one thing I've done here is I've indented circumcenter to let you know that circumcenter deals with perpendicular bisectors. So a circumcenter of a triangle is the point of concurrency. So this is a specific kind of point of concurrency in which the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle come together. So point of concurrency is where all three come together. And that point that they come together is called a circumcenter. So when we're dealing with the perpendicular bisectors being concurrent, then that point of concurrency is called a circumcenter. Now, we did this earlier in Stinger time, where we actually found our circumcenter. And yours actually ended up being inside a triangle, but that's fine. So still with this display here, we have our circumcenter here. 
And again, this is all of my perpendicular bisectors meeting together. That point is my surface. We will have a theorem that tells us more about our surface here. All right, questions on either of those two questions? Okay, so then our angle bisector, again, hopefully you remember this from previous classes, is when an angle gets cut in half. So, okay. All right, so here we have ray BD cuts angle ABC in half. That gives us an angle bisector. So again, the in center, those that have been, this deals with their angle bisectors. Our in center is the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors of the triangle. So here we have our angle bisectors drawn, and I did a rough sketch of it up here on the board. So my white line is what cuts my angles in half here. Another angle bisector, and my last angle bisector. The point at which all three of your angle bisectors intersect is called your incenter. That's our guy there, incenter. And so the incenter of a triangle is that point of frequency. Again, a specific type of frequency. Okay, questions on your vocab so far? Yes. Yes, so perpendicular bisectors all intersect at the circumcenter. Angle bisectors all intersect at the incenter. Okay, so they go to So like this one I have up here? It's still called the circumcenter. An interesting thing is that your incenter will always be inside your triangle. It is possible for your circumcenter to be outside the triangle depending on whether it's acute obtuse. Um, so we will actually go ahead, we, we will talk about this a little bit more and what the end center and circum center means for us with our practice. Any questions before we move on to the notes? Okay, so spit out the sheet of paper that looks... Yeah, so your homework is going to be to finish the vocab. That's part of your homework. Oh, like it's not hard. It's only five terms yeah, here. But don't know what mean. Mean. All you have to do is look at the hips. <laughs> you guys groan way too much. What if my textbook is like, yeah, my my cat like is for for color. <laughs> well, you better get a hundred and something dollars to pay me back for that textbook. Oh, and no, that's... there's the online textbook, and I have one here. You can just do it here. We'll you can take pictures of the page. Take you know what happened? No my cat. All right, so we uh, have this <laughs> notes. We so should have all of them. Our lesson one notes. And then I turn oh, back in my not. online, my textbook, my normal one, because I have an online one. But then my cat pooped on my laptop. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. So what we're going to be focused on today are those four terms that we talked about: the perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. Specifically, um, also what they mean for us in a triangle. All right, so first off, our perpendicular bisector theorem. from the endpoints. The endpoints are the same. Okay. 
So we've got a segment, we have its perpendicular bisector. What this theorem tells me is that any point on that perpendicular bisector is equidistant to the entrance. So let's go and draw a little picture to go with it. Let's call this A, B, um, let's call this guy N. All right, so A, B is my segment, and, and line C, M is the perpendicular bisector core. So what we have given to us is if C, M, perpendicular bisector of AB. <coughs> Alright, so again we have our segment cut in half. Also the line is perpendicular to it. Then what we know is that CA is equal to CB. This theorem tells us is that CA is equal to CB. And this is true for any point on your perpendicular bisector. I could throw one down here. Call that D. That also is going to be equidistant from your endpoints there as well. So it's for any point that lies on your perpendicular bisector. Alright, so let's take a look at how we could prove this is true. Because you do have the skills and the knowledge to prove that it's true. And it's actually not even that bad. All right, so given only the fact that we have sigma AB and that CM is the perpendicular bisector. All right, so what does that mean for us? If CM is my perpendicular bisector, what does that tell me? Okay. It bisects, so what does that mean? Good, A, M, and then B are concerned. They share C M. And it's 90 degrees, right? What do we know about those two triangles? They're congruent by side angle side. Yes, I think we did that. Well, now that we've proven that the triangles are congruent, we can state that. Well, I don't know that this is compared to that. So that A, C, and C, B are equal, but you were wanting to use isosceles triangle, right? I don't know that the legs. All right, so. But With this, we can say that the triangles are congruent. We can say triangle CAM is congruent to triangle CBM. What about hypotenuse, right? Although our hypotenuse is what we're trying to prove is congruent, so we can use that. And we know this by side angle side. So then through CPCQC, we could say that CA oops, is congruent to CB. So pretty quick and easy to All right, questions on that? Okay, so again, what we just talked about, the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle is called the good, circumcenter of the triangle. Circumcenter of the triangle. I'm going to make you write that a million times to get it in your brain. Right with me, Kate? So, is what? Can you point to the Um. So, this is when we have a triangle and we've drawn the perpendicular bisectors. For this triangle up here, we haven't done the perpendicular bisectors. But for this one over here, I did do the perpendicular bisectors. Those were my yellow lines here. And those connected at this point. Why what? 
So it can be below the triangle. Yes, your circumcenter can be outside of your triangle. Your incenter will always be inside them. All right, so let's take a look at what that circumcenter means for us with our triangle. So the concurrency of perpendicular bisector sphere. So here is the picture already drawn for us. And they have already done a perpendicular bisector. So go ahead and highlight this so go over it, label it something so you know these are your perpendicular bisectors, which means they are perpendicular. And these are my perpendicular bisectors. And that point where they all come together, point of concurrency is what again? Circumcenter. And again, this is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect at one single point. All right, so that's called our circumcenter. So the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors theorem, again, the concurrency is called your circumcenter, so let's talk about the circumcenter here, states that your circumcenter is equidistant from each of the vertices. So what our theorem states is that with J being my circumcenter, I have that this is congruent to that guy, which is congruent to that guy. It's equidistant from each of my vertices. So let's write that out. And your vertices go to the center of the triangle? The vertices are the endpoints in your triangle. Oh, it's equal to up. And this one looks nice. My circumcenter is kind of in the middle of it, but it isn't necessarily. As we see with the one on the board, it can be outside of it, it can be here. It just depends on the triangle itself. Oh. Vertice, um, so P is. The distance from P is C, A, and B all the same? Yep, the distance from P to A is the same as P to C, which is C to C. Do you believe me? No. I don't think you would. <laughs> On that construction that we did during senior time, the few pictures, the one that you did, hopefully you would. You can see that they are the same. Yeah. I think it was a 4.1 or something. Alright, so our theorem states that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point. And what's that point called? The circumcenter. Perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point, which is our circumcenter, that is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. That is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. Again, what that tells us for our picture here is we're given that J is the circumcenter. So if J is the circumcenter of triangle FGH, then by the concurrency of perpendicular bisector theorem, we can state, so then we can state that JF it's congruent to JG, which is congruent to JH. JF is equal to JG, which is equal to JH. So you can either say the measures are equal or the segments are congruent. Either way. At this point in the game, I'm going to let you use that interchange. Questions on this? Okay, so something that's interesting from this 
and I can't remember if we did this during Stinger or not, is that our circumcenter, we can use the distance from our circumcenter to a vertex, and that would give us a circle that has the triangle inscribed inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the fancy schmancy protractor, or not protractor, compass on our smart board. Okay, so I'm going to get about as exact as I can. It only lets me go in whole degrees, it won't let me go in partials. Okay. So the distance from our circumcenter out to one of our vertices is the radius of a circle that would inscribe. Which is pretty cool. Which kind of makes sense because if it's the same distance from each of my vertices, the radius in a circle stays the same all the way around. Okay. Um, so, like I said, we have a lot of new terminology and you just need to continue to look over the vocabulary and memorize it and know which goes with which. But to give you an acronym to kind of help you remember what goes with what, bear with me, this is a bit of a stretch. You know my, my analogies are usually a long shot. <laughs> Alright, so we're dealing with perpendicular bisectors. Right, so at the top I'm going to write PB for perpendicular bisectors. And of course of course, when you see PB, you think of the most delicious thing ever to hit your taste buds, thanks to George Washington Carver, peanut butter. Right? That's what you guys thought of, right? Peanut butter. All right. Now, peanut butter is often consumed with celery. Anybody do bugs on a lot? Thank celery. you, thank you, bugs on a log. So good. Yeah, I don't celery, I don't like I don't like peanut butter, butter and raisins, I, I'm crazy for chocolate chips. I despise celery. Why, why? It's it's celery. celery. It's good food, like, in the whole I'm sorry, you're missing out. So we have, you can dip it in, cel you can dip celery in it. Also, carrots and peanut butter is actually really good. Anybody done that before? Yeah, it's actually good because the carrots are like sweet. I I was hesitant, but it's good. So we can eat peanut butter with veggies. All right, leave a space there. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then, of course, the other natural thing to eat peanut butter with, other than jelly, right. is chocolate. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Right? We have peanut butter, and that goes nicely with chocolate, and peanut butter goes nicely with some certain veggies. All right. So this is to help you remember <laughs> that our perpendicular bisectors of a triangle all intersect at the circumcenter. And the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices. Well, perpendicular bisector, circumcenter, vertices, separate them. It's like an acronym fish. That's not going to help. Like, I'd rather just yeah, I've already used it like five times in it to help me to remember. So it can help. No, I'm, What's this I'd rather just memorize yeah. perpendicular bisector. That's good. Oh, that's good. Circumcenter. I wish okay. I could teach you guys algebra too so I could tell you about ravioli. With rational functions, it's a great thing. It's not that fuel. All right, so again, peanut butter goes with chocolate and veggies, or you can just remember perpendicular bisectors intersect at circumcenters, and it's equidistance from the vertices. All right, let's flip it over to the back side. For our other main topic. Which is dealing with oh, angle no. bisectors. She probably has a little better chance. She's down there. Alright, angle bisector theorem. Here we have is a, a point. <laughs> These squares are slippery. The point is on the bisector of an angle. <laughs> If a point is on the bisector of an angle, 
right? It's like forever the angle. Then the point is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Let's say equal distance. Equally distant. I'm glad I can be your source of entertainment. <laughs> 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 So again, if a point is on that bisector of an angle, and the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. And again, when we're talking about equidistant here, we're talking about the shortest distance, distance from that point to the side. And remember that shortest distance is indeed a perpendicular line. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to draw a rough sketch of an angle bisector. So please do the same. Jack, it's finished, it's still leaving. Alright, so uh, approximate. <laughs> that's actually. That's uh, let's call this A, B, C. And we'll let this ray be X, I guess. <laughs> Do you need to go get a drink of water? <laughs> okay. All right. So we have if ray B X bisects angle A B C. All right. So that's our given information. We have an angle. It's bisected. It's cut in half. If this is true, then any point along that ray should be the same shortest distance from both sides. So if B X bisects angle A B C, now again this is a rough sketch. So the shortest distance is perpendicular. So approximately. And approximately like that. These are the same distances. So I'm going to go ahead and label this intersection point Y and C. All right, so again, if we have that angle bisector, then we can state that segment XY is compared to XC, where the measure of XY is equal to the measure of XC. of the angle bisectors of a triangle is called the in center. So notice now we are dealing with angle bisectors. So perpendicular bisectors are circumcentors, create circumcentors. Angle bisectors create in centers. Yes. So when we're talking about equidistant, then we mean the shortest distance from this point to the side. And with that definition we had on our vocab sheet, the shortest distance from any point to a line is the perpendicular. <laughs> so yes, it, it will be perpendicular, yeah. Great. Right. Um, and with this, no, how, you know what? Oh, I guess in this last class, this poor kid, I missed out. Remember next one? All right, with this, any ideas as to how we could show that that is true? Actually, wait, no, I don't want to do it yet. Hypotenuse leg. I don't want to do it yet. I agree we do have the hypotenuse, but we're trying to prove this thing, right? right. So we'd have to show that. I just did it. <laughs> okay. We, I will take a look at the proof for this and... Um, 
hopefully show you guys in the near future. Okay. All right, so our point of concurrency is called the in center. So again, point of concurrency is where all of our angle bisectors come together, and we call that the in center. And this gives, has special properties for us as well. Just like the circumcenter had special properties or special consequences, same with the end center. So we do have a lovely picture already drawn for us out here. And again, the end center is our point of concurrency, and this comes from our angle bisectors. So let's highlight our angle bisectors. This is an angle bisector. This is an angle bisector. And this is an angle bisector. Okay, so these are my angle bisectors. The in center comes from where those intersect. Now the special property with our in center is that the in center is equidistant from the sides. So perpendicular bisector gave us circumcenter, which was equidistant from the vertices. Our angle bisector gives us the in center, which is perpendicular, which is equidistant from the sides. And again, the shortest distance between a point and a line is that perpendicular line. So again, these are perpendicular here. So these are perpendicular lines, but they're not necessarily perpendicular bisectors. Just because it's perpendicular doesn't necessarily mean it cuts. You'll see a huge difference over here with the triangle that I have up on the board. My angle bisectors are the white lines. Here's my in center here. And clearly, this does not cut my side. So it's perpendicular, but it doesn't necessarily cut it down. So it's not. Yeah, I lost my seat. Okay, so let's go ahead and formally write out what our concurrency of angle bisectors there is. And again, the concurrency of angle bisectors is your in center there. All right, at the point. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Angle bisectors. All right. The angle bisectors of a triangle. The angle bisectors of a triangle. intersect at a point and what is this point called <laughs> the in center angle bisectors go with in centers the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point which is our in center that is equidistant From the sides of the triangle. And the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point, which is called the end center, that is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Any point, so the end center, which is where the three intersect. But this stems from the fact that for our angle bisector here, when we're dealing just with an angle bisector, anywhere along here, it is equidistant from the sides. But when we're dealing with a triangle where those three di where those three angle bisectors intersect, that's equidistant from the sides. Right, and I do want to again clarify that in center and circumcenter aren't necessarily the same thing for an equilateral triangle. I'm pretty certain that they do end up being the same thing. I feel like it's more easy to see in this picture right here that they're not necessarily the same point. This kind of looks like it's not quite All right, so again with this we have if L is the in center of triangle D, A, J. So if L is the in center, then we have L, N, 
LN and LO are the same measure. Equidistant from each of the sides. So LM is equal to LN, which is equal to L. This guy, this guy, this guy. And again, those lines are perpendicular, not to the Questions on that? Okay, so my I don't have a good acronym for this. I was trying to come up with ideas and nothing came. Wait, 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 come back. Is that L O O? That's an L B. Alright, so for this what we have is angle bisectors. And the point of concurrency for angle bisectors is what? In center. And the in center is equidistant from the sides. So A, B, I, S, I don't know. Some people said abyss. I, at first, was like, well, abs is plural, so you would say abs are, but one single ab would be the singular form is. And then I decided that probably wasn't very good, so... The best I've got for you is peanut butter, veggies, and chocolate, and then ABIS. All right, so that might help you out in remembering. Angle bisectors intersect at the end center, and the end center is equidistant from the sides. All right, questions on that? Okay. Um, I did want to show you one more thing with our end center here. An interesting thing about our in center is that if we were to take, and you can kind of see this already drawn, stick with me, ladies. You can see it's already kind of drawn in there. But if we take this distance from the in center out to one of my sides, that again also creates a circle, which is inscribed inside the triangle. So let's try for that guy again. And I think this one, the compass doesn't let me get super exact with it, so it might not be perfect, but we'll go with it. Well, that's not too bad, actually. All right, so again, it would perfectly hit right at M, N, and O. It has the radius of that equidistant from the end center to the sides. All right, questions on that? Okay. Let me get worksheet one for you. Uh, all right, so again, reminder that your homework is worksheet one as well as finishing the vocabulary. So if you don't have access to your textbook for one reason or another, now would be a good time to write in that vocabulary. <laughs> that tricky cat. All right, so we're going to use the remaining time to uh, work on the vocabulary and the worksheet. It is a lot of time. You may listen to music if you would like to do so. I'll be coming around to answer questions as needed. It is my expectation, though, that you are diligently working. You may work with the person next to you. You will not move. You may work with the person next to you, but you can also do the right to you. Uh, I'm going to try to email me back. Is there anyone that's going to get the homework? So, again, if you don't want to do it with your textbook, you could get that textbook now and do your vocab. I'm not going to.